and Susie Kerr write the Cosmic Cupcake with this week's Doomsday Forecast. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, here it is, guys. It's the end of the world as we know it. God, we can only hope so, right? Although there is a lot more good than we ever see in the media. Media, start reporting the good. Stop reporting all of this negativity. Um, and as we cosmically arrive at the center of the galaxy, You know, we've, you know, already pretty much been there, guys. It's like all of these, you know, global changes and things are happening. We're, we're already in the middle there. Um, and astrologically, it's actually a fairly quiet week compared to some of the other weeks we've had lately over the last few years. Um, we are, however, as we know, at the end of the long cycle noted by the overmentioned Mayan calendar. And we do have a configuration that's worth mentioning in this process, which is uh, it's known as a Yod, or the Finger of God. And this is where two planets are in sextile, which is a, a mutually harmonious um, relationship. And uh, there is a third planet involved that they are are both doing something called quincunxing. It's uh, 150 degrees, and that third planet is completely incompatible with the other two planets. So this, um, the whole aspect, it kind of looks like a like a a, a Y. And uh, at the top of that, uh, at the bottom of that Y is the planet Jupiter. Um, and this aspect will activate either uh, either a powerful conduit of energy or a deeply felt block in the direction of the quincunx planet Jupiter. So the focal planet is pulling in the opposite direction from the other two in, that are in a harmonious sextile. So um, a really easy way of understanding this, Bill Tierney wrote about it and he said it's kind of like arriving at a fork in the road and having to proceed in one direction rather than another without knowing where it will lead to. So big stuff well, when it comes to this. This is a lot of that unknown that brings up a lot of fears in us. So, and I've been talking to you for a long time about this great awakening. We've got Uranus and Pluto still in square. They're going to be there for a number more years, challenging us to our own personal revolutions, correct? Um, Neptune and Pisces shifting our relationship to mankind and, and our compassion meter is going off the charts here. Our connection to spirit and all of that. I mean, it's this isn't just folks that work in the metaphysical realm. I mean, a lot of people waking up having experiences they've never had before and um, and also it, it that it, another uh, not commonly talked about thing that's going on with that with uh, Neptune and Pisces as well is our relationship to currency um, if you look back through history every time Neptune has been in Pisces our relationship with literally with our money has changed dramatically so and we are obviously seeing that shift um, and we've also again we're, you know adding this finger of God with you know with Jupiter Saturn and Pluto involved in it um, and now when you have a yod you have a planet that is known as the release or the out kind of planet and that is coming through Venus in Sagittarius so basically what it really boils down to guys is we're being given every opportunity to bring about seriously huge positive changes and evolve into more connected human beings connected to each other okay those who still choose to vibrate at a lower level may continue to do so however the contrast between the dark and the light is going to continue to intensify and intensify so our calendars now you know it's going back to the the, the actual December 21st thing um, calendars January through December they're man-made and they work just fine for us on a yearly basis you know but um, are they an accurate predict prediction of a cataclysmic event well, think about it, okay? This age that we have been in has lasted approximately 26,000 years, okay? Um, you think we m could maybe be off by a few hundred or so? I mean, do you think it's really going to come down to one day like this? Not likely, okay? Um, you know, I mean, we're, we do all kinds of things to the calendar, you know, adding leap years and stuff like that. It's, it's all off. So, nevertheless, we are changing we are definitely changing. And I suppose if we have to pick a date for the collective spiritual awakening of all mankind, the winter solstice is as good as any, right? This year, as in every year, it's the longest, darkest day of the year. But as we plunge into the dark night of the soul, what's next is the return of light. More light, brighter light, okay? And regardless of the day on the calendar, 
each day we have a grand opportunity to begin our lives over every minute every second okay make better choices free ourselves from the restrictions of our fears and our pasts and um, I want to share something with you that my dear friend Scott Gordon just wrote he has a uh, page on Facebook called Occupy Heart you might want to check this out check that out but he just he just posted this and I just thought this was perfect uh, for this week's video and um, he said I care not about politics gun control or lack thereof finding blame motivation asking why who should have known what we could have done different or any of those things all I know is there needs to be a change and it is happening I will not try to predict what will happen nor will I judge others on what they choose to do. As for me, I shall change myself because that is all any of us can do. So thanks for watching, guys. I wish you all a very happy week. And I'll be back next week with your regularly scheduled forecast, Void of Course Moons and Sign by Sign Action and Adventure. And until then, see ya.